Hello everybody and welcome back to another video on my channel. So today's video is going to be a little bit different from what I normally do. I'm actually going to be showing you guys how to stream without a streaming PC and if you have a dual GPU setup, well then you've come to the right video. But who am I kidding? You came to the video because of the title obviously. So without further ado, let's just get started. All right, so I'm using regular old OBS to record this video, but let me open up Streamlabs OBS real quick. It just takes a second. So just to give me a second. It, yeah, it's there. All right, so you're probably asking, well, why not use regular OBS like you are now? Well, there's actually a pretty good reason for that because I know a lot of people are using OBS, Streamlabs OBS now because it's a lot better than regular OBS Studio. No offense to OBS Studio, I still love it. I record all my videos off of regular OBS Studio like the one I am now. But um, if you look in my task manager, you'll see something a little bit peculiar. See this? This is a secondary GPU in my system and notice how my main GPU isn't being used and my CPU isn't being used. Now, this is called a stream encoding GPU. Now, you're probably asking, why go through the trouble of doing that when you could just build a streaming PC? Well, let me tell you why streaming PCs are dumb. One, you're just wasting extra money to have a PC that's basically sitting around and you have to buy expensive capture card equipment and all that other stuff. So adding on to the PC cost, you also have capture cards in that cost as well. Plus the time and consuming amount of time it takes to set up a streaming setup with a dual PC. And when I figured out I could use another whole GPU in my system without having to use a streaming PC, that made my life a whole lot easier. And I'm going to show you today how I did it and how much it can benefit your stream. So, if you have an SLI setup or just another GPU lying around with the same architecture, it, basically GDDR5 cards and up, then uh, you can do the same thing here. So, if you go to your OBS settings and you go to your output settings, just to be sure, this must be set on advanced. If you already haven't, put the output mode on advanced. Okay, now that we're on advanced, let's move on to the stream settings. Now. I recommend using the NVEC new encoder because it's far superior and far better, especially if you have a card that's 10 series and higher. You can actually use the NVEC new, new encoder excuse me, to render your streams and it actually looks better and performs better than old, old NVEC, which has been around since like Nvidia cards introduced it. So if you're looking right now, you're probably seeing that my bitrate is set to 3000. And the reason why my bitrate is so low is because my internet speed isn't the greatest. And you're probably asking bitrate, well, don't I just set that to 6000 because that looks the best? And it doesn't make a difference because I'm using my actual PC to encode? Well, if you're not educated or smart enough to know, Bitrate actually uses your upload speed to determine the quality of the stream, as is any other stream or any other recording you see on YouTube. And typically, you want to go to a website like speedtest.net or speed whatever, Google Speed Test even works. You want to set this to about 1000 below your upload speed because one that'll leave a little bit of upload headroom just so you can browse the web or say if there was another person using your internet they wouldn't see a significant slowdown most people just like to crank it i mean i'm not one of those people i like to use a little bit of my internet especially when i'm streaming at the same time and typically that's what you would usually do now here's a setting that most people actually skimp out on it's called keyframe interval yes i probably pronounced that wrong but i don't care so twitch if you didn't know actually if you put this on zero what's going to happen is that your stream is either going to be one choppy or two the bitrate is constantly going to be fluctuating and you're probably if you've had drop frames then this might actually fix it i'm not guaranteeing that but it might so believe it or not, 
Twitch actually likes for some reason the number two <laughs> on keyframe interval. I don't know why it likes two or why it's set to two, but that's usually what it is. Now, going down to the presets, believe it or not, using this secondary GPU, you could actually just crank this as high as you want, as long as your GPU can handle it. I mean, in my case, mine's a slightly older GPU from 2013. It still gets the job done just for streaming and recording. It's fine. Just as long as I don't crank the bitrate too high, it'll still record fine, even in 1080p 60 FPS. So once you've went through here, you've set it to max quality and high, you're going to want to check mark this if it isn't already checked, but the visual tuning, I don't know. Basically, you just want to check visual tuning. Now, this is the funky part. All right. So in your task manager, you might see GPU zero, which is what I'm using to record this video right now and GPU one. Now you may think, oh, just type zero. In Streamlabs OBS and in regular OBS, believe it or not, zero is auto. I know. Isn't that crazy and stupid, right? Why don't they just make it the same as the system? Well, I don't know what to tell you. That's how it is. And I had to figure that out the hard way. So if you want to use your secondary GPU, you would set this setting to one. Now, in other cases, I've actually seen people use their secondary GPU to game and have their main GPU on top be the stream encoder. But honestly, I wouldn't really recommend that because the top always has the most bandwidth. So you want to use that for gaming, obviously. It's up to you. That's usually how I would set it up. And that's how it should be. All right. So if you go down here, you'll see max B frames. Now, if you're doing something like, say, I don't know, just a, a just chatting stream, like if I were going, hey, guys, what's up? Hi, chat. How are you doing today? Oh, thanks so much for the donation. I would not need to set this thing any higher than like, I don't know, two, heck, maybe even one if I wasn't really doing that much. But if you're playing any sort of first person shooter game or fast paced game, you're going to want to set this to three. Zero, by the way, is auto. It just decides it for you. But I usually have this set around two or three depending on which stream i'm doing usually i have it set at three because i just don't want to go through the hassle of having to switch it and stream and then come back again but what most people actually don't know is that this is a huge quality improvement like going from two to three makes a huge quality bump even if your bitrate is up two is like great quality and three will be horrible quality in still images but very good quality and high motion content. If you're actually seeing like crazy artifacting or even worse pixelation when you're streaming while playing, you can set that as low as you want, but I usually set it at three. That's where you should keep it. Anyway, I've been rambling on about all these settings. This is all just tuning stuff. Now, here's the part that a lot of people actually just let OBS control, but Typically, you're just going to want to set it to 720p 60 like you normally would have already with your auto settings and all that. This, though, this makes a difference. Say you were using an older graphics card like mine, for instance. It's not using much recording 30 FPS, which is what this video is in. But usually when I record 1080p 60 FPS, this is at around 80, 90 percent usage. And you kind of don't want to skimp on the usage, especially even if you're using a secondary GPU. You just don't want to overwork it. So if you have an older GPU, I'd recommend setting this to 16 samples. But if you have a brand new GPU or, a, I don't know, a secondary streaming card that is a 900 series or better, I would set this to 32. It doesn't really make that much of a difference, especially if you're using an SLI setup and you have a decent GPU, which I would imagine. Now, believe it or not, there's one more setting I forgot to mention. If you see here and you go to advanced, you can switch these if you want to, say if you were doing a just chatting stream or you wanted full color coverage. I, I've honestly not ever seen a difference doing this, but what you want to check mark in here is force GPU as render device. This ensures that when you're going live, 
it won't automatically force to your CPU and instead it'll switch to your GPU. Now, why would you say that? Because if I hit the go live tab here, I'm obviously not going to go live, but you see here, there's this used optimized encoder settings. When you go live, that'll automatically switch all your settings that we just applied here. So I would recommend having that unchecked and basically having this setting on underneath here ensures that you are 100% using your GPU to record or stream. And once you've done that, just do a couple of test streams with your task manager open. See if your second GPU is getting utilized. And if it is, then you successfully uh, replicated all the steps inside this video. And I congratulate you. You can now play games without any FPS drops or any sort of performance loss. Anyway, that's the video guys. If you have any questions or if I missed something, put them down in the comments. I read those actively, so it's pretty awesome. Anyway, thanks for watching and please subscribe for more content. I'm going to have more tutorials coming in the future. Just stay subscribed.